What's good, my people? Welcome into Buckets Action Network's Daily NBA Betting Podcast. We're in the workshop Thursday NBA slate, and I got the guys with me back for the bounce back Thursday. AC, the analytics capper, Albert Wynn, and Jay Money is money. You know the man. We are presented by BetMGM, the king of sportsbooks. Go download the Action Network app. Everything you need to know about everything when it comes to sports betting is in the Action Network app. Go subscribe to the Action Network YouTube page, youtube.com slash Action Network. Everybody's on there. Tons of video content. And in my opinion, the pods are better via the video. You get a lot more nuanced stuff. So go subscribe to the Action Network YouTube page. All right, you know the deal. We give the play. We give the cap. We get you guys out of here. I'm trying to have a bounce back. Jay's trying to have a bounce back. AC is... uh. I'm trying yeah, to see if he's going to go two and zero. Oh. As we record, no, one. one and one. Okay, he split. So we're all we're all trying to get profitable here and bounce back. All right, AC, the analyst capper, give me your best bet for the Thursday NBA slate. Yeah, my best bet here is a no bet. I do have a couple of leans. I like the Mavericks minus eleven, and I like the Houston Rockets plus four. I like the Rockets a little bit more, but no official bet for me. J money is money. You said it. You tweeted it out. It's a, it's a rough a rough go on the the NBA right now. It's like throwing darts, but you got the best bet for us on a Thursday. Yeah, and I like it too. And it's fucking cashing too, man. Uh, sorry if people kids out there listen, but uh, give me the Rockets Warriors under two twenty eight. Uh, I like it down to two twenty five. I'm taking the New York Knickerbockers versus the Kings at the Garden minus the three. All right, Jay Money, I'm coming back to you since yours is an official. I like the play as well. Under Total J in the building on a Thursday. Yeah. J, the, the Total J doesn't come out often, but he likes to play. Tell, tell me why. Yeah, this is a playoff style type of game. First off, you look at the last 10 matchups from these uh, teams. Now, the Warriors have absolutely dominated. They've won 10 straight matchups versus the Houston Rockets, but uh, the under has actually been a good play as well. The under is 4-1 and one in their last five matchups. Uh, it's it's 7-2 uh, and two in their last nine matchups. And then it's uh seven and uh so no six and six and two in their last eight matchups, and then seven and three in their la- to the under in their last ten matchups. The Warriors also also been playing really great defense. They're they've been holding teams to an average of 102 points. Um as well. That's what their defensive rating has been over this five game win streak. And the unders have went four and one over their stretch as well. Listen, both of these teams are gonna be playing. This is a playoff game, like literally, this is almost like a play-in game before the play-in tournament. If the Rockets have want to have any chance of making a play in they got to win this game they play really great defense at the house and the Warriors like I said they obviously they saw what Tory Eason said like Warriors come out and play they uh they they want to go out here and get this win as well so both teams are I see really high defensive uh intensity in this game we don't really see that anymore but um this game might not get past 220 I just feel like this is going to be a rock fight both teams just throwing haymakers um the defense is going to be at a high we know that the team that the refs haven't been calling a ton of fouls anymore as well so um this is a playoff style type of game every possession is going to matter I like the under in this game and we've already seen it and get hit um I took some 228 it's going down to 227 and a half, 226 and a half. Um, this might close like 220, 225, and I'd still take the under here. I don't see it getting past 220 points. Um, this is a defensive rock fight type of game versus two team uh, with two teams that's been playing their best defensive basketball this season here. So uh give me under in the playoff game here. Golden State Warriors 14 and 22 to the under on the road this year. I agree with Jay. This is a little if Houston loses this game. It's all but over for the season on them trying to make the playoffs via the play-in. That push they made coming down the stretch here is for not Jalen Green, even though that's a good story. Offensively, him playing a lot better. It's for not, at least if we're talking team ball. I do agree with Jay. This should be a very high, intense game. And also, if Houston, a team that plays really well on uh, on defense at home and overall at home this year, Golden State's been playing a handful of games here that have been high intensity, trying to separate themselves from Houston. Mm-hmm. Now they got to go down to Houston, coming off some uh, some tough games the last 10 days or so. So, yeah, I agree. This is going to be a, a, a grinded out, tough game. 228 is heavy. I, I do like this spot. AC, the analyst, Capper, Albert Wynn, any thoughts? 
Yeah, that's why I like Houston. Um, it's not an official play. It might be tomorrow, um, but that's. I think they're the more desperate team. And I think uh, Jay mentioned this a couple of weeks ago, like narrative betting, right? Like we're not saying games are fixed. We're not saying there's a conspiracy, but if the Rockets win tomorrow night, the, the race is going to be a lot closer, right? Because they're, they're three games out right now, plus a tiebreaker. So it's truly four games out. They lose that game. It's pretty much over. You're going to start seeing the Warriors. I don't know how close they are to number nine. Yeah, they're two games behind LA. If the Lakers start winning as well, like you're going to see Warriors start resting guys because they already have 10 locked up. NBA doesn't want that. They want to see these teams play all 82 games. So I think the Rockets, if they're going to grind it out. They're going to make it really physical. The Warriors, even though they've been playing really, really awesome defense, they've been playing kind of soft teams, Charlotte, Spurs, um, I know they they did beat Dallas Mavericks the other night, but Dallas plays really really slow anyway. So it's not like they're they're playing like a run and gun type of offense. But their defense with Draymond Green has stepped up a lot since his return. So I like that spot. I like that look for Jay. Couple of interesting trends here: the Warriors have covered the spread in eleven of their last twelve games as road favorites. The Rockets have lost the first half in each of their last five games. The Warriors have won twelve in a row versus the Rockets as well. I know Jay brought that up previously on a different Buckets pod. But, yeah, they've had their number. Playoffs are starting early for the Houston Rockets if they don't get this game. And I, I, I the, and the one thing I do trust with Ime Udoka is to express how big of a spot this is for these guys. There's a lot of young guys on that squad, but I think Ime will relay the message that, yo, this is a must-win game here at home against – the uh, against the Warriors, even and almost, uh, I, I, and I don't want to be the guy that's starting to talk about looking ahead, but like Eme coming into Houston is resetting the culture and resetting everything about that franchise. This is a game that you must show up and play hard. And if they're there, the, I just don't see them showing up against the team that they need to beat to get to that ten and rolling over and not showing up and showing up at a very high intensity way. And if and if this script goes how we think it's going to go, that's how they've been playing all year at home in these spots. So, uh this is the the ultimate Rockets home ball spot and they should show up and play that way. All right. Um AC, give me your leans and then I'll close it out and then we'll get out of here. Talk to me about you kind of gave the the Rockets lean. Talk to me about the other side. Yeah, the other one is Dallas Mavericks. Um, they just they're coming off a loss in you know in San Francisco against the Warriors. It was a close game. Um, Steph Curry didn't even play well, but it was their defense, like we mentioned, that really shut down Dallas. I think Dallas. So they're playing tomorrow night, Thursday at home against the Hawks. They play again Friday night against those same Warriors. I think if this team is who we think they are, right? If they're the Mavericks that won, you know, nine of ten. They need to take care of business against Atlanta, rest those guys in the fourth quarter, and and really go for it on Friday and get revenge. So that's the spot I'm looking at. I'm putting a lot of faith here in, in Doncic and Kyrie. But there is one caveat. I want Derek Lively to play. I think he's questionable right now. Gafford has been great in the starting lineup, but I don't think he's a guy that can do it for 80 games. He needs someone like Lively to you know spell him for 20 25 minutes a game so if lively is in i'm gonna really really like this spot and potentially bet it uh if he's not in it's more of a coin flip for me yeah atlanta is uh gonna be on a back-to-back they just played detroit in atlanta where i'm at right now tonight they did not cover the number they won by eight they were laying 11 and a half that's where it closed but prior to that prior to coming into the night they had won Five of six against the number. They've been playing a lot better than the market expects them to play. They continue to see really big numbers. This is going to be another big number versus uh, the Dallas Mavericks. But the whole Steph Curry thing the against Dallas is odd. He can't score against Dallas. Every time he plays the Dallas Mavericks, he rebounds, he assists, but he can't score on them. It's a really interesting uh phenomenon go back and look at some of those numbers it's uh it's really interesting that Steph can't get it done against them but yeah the Atlanta Hawks are tough to figure out they seem like they enjoy one thing 
that's always interesting that I pull away from some of this stuff, Jay Money, is that no, I would never say the Atlanta Hawks are better with Trey Young off the floor. But yeah. man, do they look like they they man, do they look like they have a lot more fun together playing basketball when he's not around. And that's where these big numbers and this overvalue comes into play, and they've been covering the number a lot more since he's left the floor. When he was on the floor, they were tracking to be the worst cover ever of all time in the NBA. He leaves the floor. They're playing a lot better. Jay Money, how do you feel about uh, this spot with uh, the Mavs overall? Yeah, I'll let you guys in on a little secret. Uh, I do not see Trey Young being on the Atlanta Hawks next year. That's just, uh, it's, I mean, they this was an experiment. That's why they shut him down for the rest of the year. They didn't have to. Um, they didn't have to shut him down. Like whatever surgery he had, he probably could have went through the rest of the year. They like, all right, get the surgery. Let's see how we how we play with Dejounte Murray and the rest of the guys. And they're balling. I mean, imagine how many games they would have covered and won if they just had this roster, right? <laughs> so um, this it's just, sometimes it's just not a great fit. They brought Dejounte Murray over there, thought it was going to be a great fit. It turns out that Mur that Trey Young was actually messing up Murray's thing. He's better with the ball <laughs> in his hands. I mean, he's going out there getting triple doubles. He's out there balling out. You see what I'm saying? So um, this is Dejounte Murray's team now. Trey Young is just better off somewhere else. Sometimes it's you just got to realize when the fit isn't right. Uh, for this game right here, I would lean toward the Mavs. It is a few too many points, especially with a huge revenge spot on deck uh, versus the Warriors. Uh, it'd be interesting to see because if the Warriors, um, I don't think the Warriors lose both of these games, and I do think that the Mavs beat them on Friday. So um, I kind of do lean to the Warriors to win. I mean, I, maybe not even lay the points, but just like on the money line, I do lean them to win uh, versus the Rockets. Go ahead and put them boys away. But I do think the Mavs are going to get some revenge on Friday. Um, uh, uh, AC mentioned something. They need Lively back there because you got Maxi Kleba coming off the bench. It's not that he's a bad center, but he's no Derek Lively. They really figured something out with starting Gafford having Lively coming off the bench. He's a really good lob uh, threat. He's a really good defensive uh, uh, rim protector as well. So uh, it's a few too many points, but this game could get ugly. Back to back, uh, third game in four nights, fourth game in six nights, fifth game in eight days, sixth game in nine days for the Hawks um, there. So I know they've been covering, but um, I, I mean, obviously the Mavs could really do whatever the hell they want this game you just hope that they're not really looking ahead uh to their next night versus the uh versus the um the warriors and that one man so tough game i lean to the mavs but you definitely need lively out there the hawks did have to play a ton of minutes here tonight one thing to bring up about atlanta is they are tied now with the bulls on that mm -hmm. nine ten. they can get yeah. to the nine very easily so that is something I guess you could throw in the motivation, the, the motivation category for Atlanta to potentially get going and try to snag that nine, play that nine, 10 game at home instead of having to travel to Chicago. Interesting spot. There's a lot of interesting spots throughout the rest of the year. I mean, a lot of the things I've been trying to give out are if I like a side, I'm leaning more team total than anything else because these numbers are so inflated. They're hard to figure out what team is going to show up as we come down the stretch here. That's one thing that's interesting about Boston. Every time I try to discredit them, like why would they continue to keep mashing people by 30 every night because they have the one locked up? They don't seem to mind too, too much. Like I understand that they had a little bit of a lull, fellas, against Atlanta. Call it a flute, call it whatever you want, but like, the game tonight, no SGA, no Jalen Williams again. We talked about, you know, how that could potentially mentally mess with the other squad, especially a team like Boston. Everybody played. They mashed them. No problem. Let's get to the next night. So it's a really interesting time right now in the league prior to the playoffs. All right. I am going to go with the New York Knicks at home versus the Sacramento Kings. I'm going to lay the three points here. The New York Knicks have lost three in a row. This is uh, a really tough spot for them. Pending the injury report, Josh Hart is massive for them. I'd wait and see if he's going to be in the lineup. If he's going to be in the lineup, this is probably a no action for me on this spot. It's just a tough slate overall. But if, if Josh does go and you get an inkling that he is going to go, I think uh, the Knicks should take care of business here at home coming off three straight losses. They've been tough losses. I think coming down the stretch here with the amount of minutes that Hart has been getting with the amount of minutes that Hardenstein has been getting with the amount of minutes that everybody, uh, 
everybody, everybody, yeah, yeah, everybody <laughs> has been getting in. Just the load offensively that Jalen Brunson is under is extremely tough for these guys to continue to show up night in, night out. But they're starting to slip now here in the East. Like they're two games out of the play-in. Damn. If they collapse here down the stretch, <laughs> they could be in the play-in. This is not a joke right now, right? So they need to get back and get right in a, in a couple different areas. They've been sensational at home overall. They uh, a couple a couple calls didn't go their way against the Oklahoma City Thunder down the stretch, and then SGA hit a fall away from the baseline that was a tough shot that ended up falling. They could have got that W. I think at home, I like the Knicks regardless. Now, I will show, I will, I will give you guys some numbers on Sacramento overall on the road. They've been pretty good as a way underdog, which they'll be here 13 and seven ATS as an underdog overall 15 and nine ATS. So they've been pretty good as the away team 22, 14 and one. That's 61.1% ATS. I just think if Josh Hart goes in this matchup, the Knicks are the only way I can look coming off of three straight losses. You're going to get max, max, max effort from the New York Knicks, especially after coming off of a day, full day's rest here. So I'll take the Knicks minus the three. Let's see where we shake. AC, the analyst capper, any thoughts on this Knicks-Kings matchup? So I don't, I don't like betting the Kings. I was on the Kings recently against the Clippers. They covered, but it's not the same team without Malik Monk. It's not the same team without right. Kevin Horter. Right. Like the, the spacing thing. is, yeah, the spacing is not the same for the Sacramento Kings. So their offense is going to take a big hit, to be honest. And I think they're winning these games like a short term, but long term, like I'm, I'm very, very bearish when it comes to the Kings. The Knicks are a very desperate team. Like you mentioned, they've lost, you know, several games in a row now. They're at home. That was a heartbreaking loss against OKC. It should be a spot where they come back, but it's going to be reliant like so much on Jalen Brunson. And I, I just don't know. I don't know if he can guard De'Aaron Fox and hold Fox under 40 and also score 40 himself. It's it's a t- tall order to ask. So I'm going to lay off this game. The total is low for a reason, so I lean the under there as well. But uh, I'm, I'm laying off. I think it's going to be a good game, though. Jay Money, any thoughts? I like the Knicks here. I'm going to play the Knicks. I don't care if Hart's playing or not. Um, obviously, I'd like to have him out there. He played 40. But Tim's got to start doing this, man, because he has a, actually a bench. You got to stop playing these guys 46 out of 48 minutes, man. There's no way that you – like, that's why these, that's why some teams really run out of gas in the playoffs. I get it that you want to get the top seed, but there's other ways you can win. You can still lean on some guys like Bogdanovich, even though he hadn't been playing well. Like, give him a little bit more time. Like, maybe even start Bogdanovich a game or something to try to get him into his flow. But um, this is what you do you put miles mcbride on darren fox um and you need divincenzo as well who divincenzo has went up fought, went up against fox plenty of times in practice because he used to play for the kings i like the knicks here they've lost three straight games you got the kings coming off of a win versus the clippers huge win um i still don't think the kings are that great of a team they got fox they got sabonis two hell of a players even sometimes keegan murray can ball out he balled out last game as well but they used to use malik monk as their closer they're gonna miss this guy and they're gonna miss him in this game right here they're traveling cross country as well with only one day of rest i think the knicks smash these boys here we really like to have josh hart in there but even if he's out i still think the knicks this is somewhere like a must-win spot uh unfortunately it is the first game of back-to-back they play the bulls the next night but that's all the more reason why you should want to get this win at the house right. especially after losing like based on the game winner versus sga as well so uh, the knicks have been playing some great teams um i don't i'm not uh the kings aren't a bad team but i don't think that they're to the level of god of like miami and the uh and the thunder like that have that depth as well so you can take Fox, you contain Sabonis, and the Knicks get a double-digit win here. I will play Knicks here, minus three. Yeah, I think this is the spot, too, where there not a lot of teams have the bigs that can deal with Sabonis, especially on the glass, and the New York Knicks do do have that. They can deal with Sabonis on the glass. It's going to be a lot of one-possession type spots on offense for Sacramento, so I agree with what you laid out there, Jay. I'm going to go with the Knicks, minus three. All right, to recap, AC, the analyst capper, a couple of leans, Houston, plus four, and he's going to go with Dallas on a lean, minus 11. J Money is money. Rockets, Warriors, under 228 would play it to under 225. I'm on the Knicks, minus three with J cosign. He's going to play it as well. For AC, the analyst capper. For J Money is money. I am your host, Sean Little. We are presented by BetMGM, the king of sportsbooks. 
Go download the Action Network app ASAP. There is a live buckets tomorrow, 11 p.m. Eastern. Matt Moore will be leading the way. I'm actually doing a couple bet casts on True TV. I'm doing the TNT doubleheader. I'm doing Knicks Kings, and then I think I'm doing Dallas after that. I don't know who the second game of the TNT doubleheader is, but double check that. I'll be doing the bet cast. Come kick it on True TV and watch the live buckets at 11 p.m. As I mentioned, for AC, the analyst capper, for J Money is Money, I am your host, Sean Little. Don't forget it. Get buckets, baby. We'll see you all tomorrow on the live show.